Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Sharon Cullen Art. I'm just sitting here in my front yard today. I'm still not back up to snuff yet, so I thought I, I had messed up a page over here and I had pencil lines that I couldn't erase. So I decided I'm going to do a little bit of a landscape, although I just lost my light. Hopefully it's still in my memory. Um, <clears throat> just going to do a little landscape and gouache to cover up those pencil spots. But um, I'm going to go ahead and put in some colors here. I just have an empty palette that I put some pans into. And um, I am just putting in the gouache that I need. Oops, I'm sorry, my hand's in the way. This is just a sink, one of those double palettes. I think this was one of those Prima, Prima marketing things with those really crappy watercolors in it. I got it years ago just to get the... the um, palette because to buy the palette empty was caught would cost more than getting the watercolors so I thought well I'll kill two birds with one stone I will get the um, palette and do a review on it which I did many years ago and I know a lot more about watercolor now than I did then but um, anyway I'm just going to go ahead and Put these colors in my first one was linen green i love that color for for um landscapes that had white in it i'm going to put my blue over here this is prussian blue and i've got a little too much out i can tell already although there are some dark areas in the forest so i will do that and then i want a little bit of sepia I don't know if I'm going to, I'll probably use my burnt sienna on the ground cover because there's still old leaves down. And, um, shoot, I'm having trouble getting the color off because it's mixing the, the stuff is separating, you know what I mean. Anyway, I'm going to put a little bit of black over here in the corner. And, of course, I will need white, but I'm going to wait for that. Well, maybe I better not because... I will need it right away. So I carry a little bag. It's just a one of those Thrive Cosmetic makeup bags. I carry that with me with all the different colored gouaches I might need. And um, then I carry the palette. And I can use what's left in the palette. If I don't use it up, I can spray it with some water and then add to it. But I don't want to fill the pans because I used to not mind having my gouache be dry but now I prefer it wet I guess I don't know I go through stages you know like everybody does and I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my brushes I'm using this this um, lap board that I have I'm trying to zoom out here if I can it's not letting me there we go let's go this way oh, for goodness sakes anyway it's this board, and I flipped it over so that I can use it left-handed. I got my water cup here and three little brush holders that I will use. This is the wrong tripod for this, but I'm just going to grab my gouache brushes, which are mostly um, flats because that's what I prefer. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm really out of it. I'm not even talking well, but I'm getting there, so... For those of you who weren't aware, I've been in the hospital um, with pneumonia, and I'm really shaky, so um, I, I don't know how good this is going to be, but we'll give it a shot and see what happens. Um, I'm just going to grab a couple brushes here, see if this will fit in here. They're going to fall right through. <laughs> oh, well, that's all right. They fit over on this end. There. Okay, and I've got a rag hanging here. I was going to just clip my palette there but I'm just gonna leave it off to the side and it'll be fine I'm sorry about the angle that I have um, it's the best that I can do in a pinch but I figured if you wanted to watch this video you could at least see something that I'm doing so I will talk to you guys a little more about what's been going on with me while I paint yeah, so I was not doing very well. My breathing started to get a little short of breath, and I thought, you know, with my chronic lung infection, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to need to start on my antibiotics. It's been eight weeks, which is kind of overdue for me. 
And um, that night I went to bed and woke up at four in the morning, just trembling, shaking all over the bed. I was, I was so out of it. And Pat woke up and he's like, are you okay? And I said, I don't know. And I, if my medication, my pain medication wears off too quickly, I wear a pain patch. And if it wears off too quickly because it was hot and I've been sweating or something, I metabolize it faster and then I don't have enough to get through. But I had just changed my pain patch that day. But I was having these feelings like withdrawal. Um, those of you who've been on pain medication, I'm talking physical withdrawal. Not I'm not addicted, but I'm physically dependent because I've been on it for so long. So if it wears off too quickly, it will put me into withdrawal symptoms. So I started yawning and feeling the need to stretch my muscles really far and everything. And I thought, uh-oh, it must be my pain medication. So I took a pain pill because that will usually boost me enough to get me through the night and then I can worry about it in the morning. So I did that and I didn't get any better. So I thought, well, shoot, maybe I'm sick. I checked my temperature and it was 100.6, 100.6. And I thought, oh, crap. So I got out of bed. I went and grabbed my steroids and I went to grab my Cipro that I take every, you know, several weeks, and it was empty. And I went to call in the refill, and the refill was uh, expired. So I thought, oh, great. So I called the doctor, the doctor on call. And in the meantime, I had checked my temperature again because about a half hour passed, and now I was feeling really sick. Plus, I have adrenal insufficiency. So when you don't have stress hormone or cortisol in your system, and you get sick, I can bottom out really fast. I mean, to the point where I need an ambulance. So um, I thought, oh, shoot, I'm not doing well. So I laid back down, I checked my temperature, and then, then like 25 minutes, half hour later, it was 102.4. And I thought, oh, no. Well, the doctor called me back, and he said, Sharon, you should not be having a fever like this with this infection. There's something else going on. You've got to get to the hospital right away. So I did, and I was admitted, and they did a chest X-ray on me, and my entire right lung was filled with pneumonia. And um, so they kept me in the hospital a couple days. But then I started having panic attacks because of my PTSD. And those of you who are new to my channel may not under know what's going on there, but a few years ago I had surgery on my neck. And post-op, I was in my room and coded. So the CPR team came in and they were working on me. And I woke up to that. And being a nurse, it flipped me out. And I was having panic attacks the entire hospital stay. And I wasn't even aware I was having them. I had never had one in my life. I know as a nurse what to look at. But when you're in it, you don't think rationally. So I could not put the pieces together. It was horrific. So when I went into the hospital this time, I started to have panic attacks and I needed to get out of there. So they discharged me and it was premature because the next day I ended up right back in the emergency room again. Or was it the next day? Two days later. It was either one or two days later. I was back in the hospital again. I was declining fast. So they did another chest direct x-ray and this time it was also in the left lung. So I've been recovering from that, and I'm doing a little bit better. The nice thing was, is with all the steroids they put me on, the IV steroids, the oral steroids, everything, it helped my back pain tremendously. But now I'm weaning off of the prednisone, and my back pain is starting to ramp up. So today I had to call my uh, orthopedic surgeon that did my neck surgery, and I was on hold because it was a Monday morning, and it's a surgeon's office, very busy. Uh, I was on hold for probably 10 minutes. And in the meantime, I had a panic attack because of the thought of po the possibility of having another back surgery, spine surgery again. It's all linked in my head. I have gone through years of therapy. I've gone through mindfulness training, and I could pop myself out of it. In fact, I'm talking about it now. Normally, just talking about it sets me off. So I'm doing better that way. But um, yeah, so 
I'm a little reluctant to go in and have any surgery done, which is why I've been putting this off, but it is so excruciatingly painful. I can't walk normally anymore. Um, I have to limit how many steps I take. Um, Pat's waiting on me hand and foot. And it before, you know, it's been gradually getting worse and worse and worse. Well, the last few nights I have not been tolerating laying down in bed even. And that was helping me before. But there's something I do when I'm in bed. I don't know if I flip my position funny or what, or my mattress is firm enough. I've made sure of that. But um, <clears throat> I end, a, end up getting up out of bed to go to the bathroom or something, and my legs get really weak and they buckle from under me, which makes me think my spinal cord's getting compressed. And I'm sure it is. That's what happened in my neck, too. I'd turn my head and I'd fall, I'd fall to the ground. Then my head would snap forward and I'd be okay again. So that was an emergent surgery that they did on that one. My uh, spinal cord was flattened like a pancake. They said I was like a sneeze away from paralyzing myself, which was pretty scary. So I'm going to see him July 1st. And we'll go from there. Hopefully surgery is not necessary, but um, low back surgery has very, very high risk and a low uh, positive outcome ratio. Hmm. Like for my problems, the more problems you have in your back, if you just need a discectomy, having a disc removed, your likelihood of a positive outcome is in the 90 percentiles, you know? But you start adding spinal stenosis in, ankylosing spondylitis, facet joint disease, all of these things, three herniated discs, a torn one. Um, then with every added problem, it gets, the, the positive outcome ratio gets lower and lower and lower and lower, down to about 38%. And of those 72% remaining, uh, or 62% remaining, the um, positive outcome or the, the probability of increased pain post-op, having more pain than what you went in with, goes way up to about 60%, 40 or 60%. So you guys, I'm very scared about that. And I've done research. I'm a registered nurse. I, I look at scholarly articles. I don't just Google something um, and do it that way. So I know I, I've done my research. In fact, when I had my neck surgery done, my surgeon said to me, just be glad it's not your low back because if it was your low back, we'd have big problems. And now here it is, my low back. Same thing all over again. And so the panic attacks start. And now I'm getting shaky, so I'm going to change the subject. So anyway, um, I'm home now, but the steroids are wearing off and my pain is going up. So that is a problem. I've been trying to paint, but because I've been doing breathing treatments... My hand is so shaky. I can't paint a straight line. And, you know, with age, you start to lose some of your steadiness in your hands anyway. But, boy, you add a breathing treatment onto that, and you are bouncing off the walls, let me tell you. It's like drinking a pot of espresso. I mean, it's, it's nuts. So this isn't my best work, but it's something that you guys can watch me do. And, and um, yeah, everything should turn out okay. At the end of the video, there's a portion that I ended up not um, recording. I went back about an hour or two later and decided I needed to add more detail to it. So you'll see the final picture is slightly different than what you see at the end of the painting. It's not a huge difference at all. But this color green that I put in the background, I decide is too light. So I'm going to be going back in after I start putting the leaves on that that forward tree and I'm going to go back in with my Prussian blue and um, make it a lot darker so you'll see that happen fairly soon here so several days have passed since I did the opening of this video and my breathing's much better I'm feeling much stronger um, but I'm not sleeping at all in fact last night I had 
I wear a smartwatch in my sleep so I can measure my sleep cycles and everything. I had two hours and 15 minutes of sleep. I've been up since 2.20 this morning, and I can no longer sleep in a bed um, because of that leg weakness I get, and the pain gets excruciating. So um, I had to lay in my recliner, which is not what I want to do, um, but that's the only way that I could get any rest. And as it ended up, I never fell asleep again. I ended up online shopping. That's not healthy. <laughs> Because you can spend a lot of money when you're out of it. But I was just basically buying harp music. But I've been buying a lot of Christmas music and stuff because being a beginner, I need to start early to learn those kinds of songs. So um, I've been doing that. And the shakiness isn't really helping that as much either because I can't get my fingers between the strings. But speaking of harps, my new harp is being made and they finished the staining and the um, gloss coat on it and they buffed it today and they're going to be putting the pieces all together and I should have strings on it this week. Hopefully it will go out in the mail next week. It would be so awesome if I got it by the end of next week, but I'm thinking probably two weeks before I get it. Oh, I'm getting so antsy for it. I cannot wait. Um, I just got to figure out where I'm going to put it. <laughs> My house is not that big. And this is a bigger harp. It's not a concert harp. I'm not getting a pedal harp. I want to stick with the lever harp. And um, there are different styles of harps. You know, you see the big concert harps that are like six, seven feet tall in front. And um, they have pedals going around the bottom. There's seven pedals, one for each note. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and um, for me, I play a lever harp or a lever harp, and with each note, it has its own separate lever to make it flat or sharp, depending on how I tune it, so um, I prefer that style. I don't want to play a pedal harp. Uh, they're loud. Uh, you push the pedals up and down, and they get real loud, and they bang, and I don't like all that, so a lever harp is a bit of a challenge too, but it's fun for like playing Celtic music or, you know, I can play anything on this. I can play classical, I can play um, pop, jazz, Celtic, whatever. And with the pedal harp, those are more geared toward classical. And the string tension is very high. And my fingers are arthritic. <laughs> so that could make it very painful. Plus you get a lot of blisters with those. Um, the one that I'm getting will have high, a lot higher tension than the, the harp I'm playing right now, so that'll be an adjustment. But it'll have more strings, and they'll be spaced just slightly further apart, which will be helpful for me. Um, at least I'm hopeful for that. Um, but I got it in green. It's going to be a very deep green, and then the soundboard on the top of the soundboard is quilted maple and that is in a natural color just a light brown and oh it's so beautiful you guys I was going to get a pearl inlay in it but I waited a week too long to mention it to them so it was too late when I contacted them and that's fine it would have been another extra hundred bucks so and an extra two weeks of waiting because they would have had to refinish that section of the harp so um, they have to put the strings on they have to put all the levers on each string and get those set. And then they have to put in my pickup for my amplifier that will, uh, the pickup will be glued inside the soundboard. And then I'm also getting lights put on this harp. So um, the lights will pop out a hole and then they will go across the top and the back and they will light up the harp, which is really nice for um, people with bad eyesight <laughs> like me. Uh, you can shine the light down on your strings and see them a little bit better. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, you know, I've been posting my harp videos on my YouTube account. It isn't for art-related purposes, but it's for my harp groups. Whoops. I'm sorry, you guys. I just dropped that. Uh, it's for my harp groups, harp groups in particular. I mean, I don't mind you guys seeing them, but... Um, to show my progress with the group of harpists that are learning along with me. We all share our videos. 
um, if you YouTube heart progress videos, you'll see a lot of them, how people progress. Younger people obviously progress a lot faster than us old folks, but, um, <laughs> but I'm enjoying it. It's a lot of fun, and it has been very helpful when I have to sit still. Uh, I get a lot of practice time in, so... Uh, yeah, so, oops, I'm sorry. So that's what's going on there. My landscaping is done. Um, we're finishing up the decks. The front porch, if you follow me on Instagram, I showed you a little sneak peek of my front porch. Um, this Friday, our contractor comes back. He had to work his other job this week. So he comes back on Friday and we'll finish the bench. We had the guy who did our railing inside our home and did the ladder for me. He's building the railings. We're going to do wrought iron railings on the deck, uh, the stairway going down in the front. And it's going to be very modern looking with circles and then pillars and stuff like that. And then um, what else? Oh, he's building me a big uh, arbor to go over the step that comes off of my garage uh, pavement area. And... It'll be about 10 feet high, I believe, 8 or 10 feet, so that it's easier to walk through because it'll be going over a step, and um, it'll be wide enough that you can get through it easily. I'm still trying to decide what kind of flowers I want. First, I thought about trumpet vine. I think they're beautiful, but they are very invasive, and I don't want to deal with that. They're hard to control. So morning glories, I could do those. Or I'm thinking maybe moonflower. Oh, moonflowers are huge and beautiful. Uh, this year, I'm probably not going to do anything because by the time I get it, it's going to be late. Um, but I can put Christmas lights on it. Still waiting on my hot tub. That has not come yet. Um, they said maybe July. I'm thinking probably October. I'm, I, I've got this really, really sinking suspicion that I'll need back surgery and then my hot tub will come and I'll be excited and I won't be able to get into it because I'll have an incision that needs to heal. That would be just my luck. And we are still waiting on our couch for our living room. So I haven't done any tour of the inside of my home either. And uh, to be honest, my husband really doesn't want tax assessors seeing it. So I might just show you bits and pieces here and there, but I don't know how I'm going to do that. We'll figure it out somehow. Um, I just won't put any tags on the video or anything like that that would draw people in, I guess. I probably have to erase all this. Anyhow, um, so what else do we need to do outside? Um... Got to put some lights up over by my walkout. I got those patio lights, those hanging ones. And I've got, we've got to get gravel for our driveway, real gravel this time. I was very upset that we spent all that money and we got crushed concrete or something. That makes powder and dust. I don't need powder and dust in my driveway. We want to keep our vehicles clean. We want to keep the dust down in our house. So next year uh, in the spring, we're going to go ahead and get our driveway graveled properly so that we can keep dust down to a minimum. Um, let's see. All of my trees bloomed. Uh, my lilac tree bloomed. It was beautiful. It was white. I was hoping for a, a lavender color or something, but it's a white lilac. It is so fragrant. You can smell it like all over the property, the backyard, the front yard, the side, everywhere. Um, but the lilacs are dying now and turning brown. So, um, yeah, so that's the end of that. And I have flowers going around my studio now, daylilies and irises going all the way around. The daylilies are about ready to bloom. The irises bloomed beautifully, but I was not over there because the seed had just been laid and I could not walk on the ground. So I had some supplies in the house, and that's what I've been using. I have not been... in to my studio. Well, Pat went out there last week when I was in the hospital to water my plants, and that's been about it. Um, and then after we finished that front deck, I got kind of sidetracked. They've got to put the, the skirting around the bottom. We're not going to do lattice. We're going to do solid skirting all the way around. And um, then in the back, we still have to, we're waiting on a door to come in uh, because our porch on the back is going to have two doors, one at either end, and 
it will be screened in. So it'll be a three season room that we'll be able to use. And the bugs haven't been too bad this year because it has been so dry in Michigan. We had rain this morning. I sat here and watched it. Um, it started at about, I don't know, quarter to four and ended around 6 a.m. And so it was a nice steady downpour, which we needed. Our farmers have been going crazy because there hasn't been any rain for a couple of months here. It, it's it been raining in Michigan, but it gets over to the thumb area of the lower peninsula of Michigan. If you look at the mitten, there's a thumb on the right side. I live in the tip of that. And when it gets over to that area, it crosses the Bay of Lake Huron before it hits us. And the lake causes a separation in these fronts because the temperature of the water is different than the temperature of the land, you think that that would bring more storms because we're right on the edge of the water. I mean, we're like a quarter mile in. But no, everything kind of separates and goes south of us and north of us, and then we get nothing. I was really surprised when I moved further north. I thought we'd be getting pummeled with snow. Our winters are actually pretty light in comparison to where I used to live, where I was right in a snow belt, and we got deep, deep snow um, where I lived before. And we do get that here on occasion, but a lot of it is so dependent on temperature. Well, all snow is, but I mean the temperature of the water um, making a huge difference for us. So in this summer, boy, oh boy, we're like 85 in May, and now we're going to be dropping into the 40s tonight in the end of June. Crazy, crazy weather. I don't get it. Don't get it at all, but that's okay. I've got a roof over my head, and that's what matters, <laughs> so I am safe. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, so that's pretty much everything that's been going on with me, all the updates and everything. So my painting here is moving along. You can see I've been putting that blue in and dabbing it in and out of the tree a little bit so the leaves will pop a little more. I didn't have any yellow in my bag, and I really needed a cool yellow in order to bring the light out on the trees. All I had was that linden green, which turns very green when you put it on top of green. So I was trying to add white to it and everything to try to lighten these leaves up. And I was really struggling with the light because of that. And I didn't really plan it very well. But like I said, it was kind of a bad day. I was only out of the hospital like two days I couldn't even carry on a conversation, so I was just sitting on my front porch staring out at a tree and thought it was pretty with the dappled light on it and didn't capture it as well as I had hoped. Plus, the light had disappeared. It clouded over, and we got so much wind. So you get the idea. The wind had just whipped up and I thought we were going to get a storm. So I was trying to hustle to get everything finished. And that's why after a couple hours when things settled down, I decided to go back and start to add in more detail to try to get some more light value. But I didn't feel like looking for my yellow gouache. So I did without it and did the best I could with what I had. Um, oh, and I've got a palette coming that I'm going to be reviewing. It's Art Toolkit's new palette. It's the Folio palette, and it's much bigger. It's like the size of two business cards. And I love those little skinny palettes for travel because they're, they're just awesome. They're really awesome. And I might be able to do um, switch my smaller one over to gouache or something and and uh, use the bigger one for watercolors. We'll see how I'm going to do it. But I'll be doing a review on that when that comes. It'll probably be here either later this week or uh, it's a new product for her. So it could be very busy and uh, it might take her a little longer to get it out to me. But we have that to look forward to for a review. And uh, let's see. I am still planning on getting out and doing plein air painting. Um, I'm starting to feel a little better from the chest. 
up, but now my low back is an issue. So it would probably be done in my car unless I have a really comfortable chair to sit in. So we'll see how that goes. Now here I am going to go ahead and start adding some of the leaves and plant life in over on the left hand side of the uh, painting here and I'm going in with very dark green to start and then I'm going to layer over it with my lighter colors and then I'll be putting ferns down in the front. Now the ferns that I end up putting in I'm not happy with and that's one of the things I go back later and I do some detail on those as well as fixing the grass and the the dirt and leaves that are on the ground and that sort of thing and I add in a few more distant trees and uh, you'll see it take shape here all this time I've been using my flat brushes I think I had a three-quarter inch and I had a half inch and now I'm on a quarter inch and I just slowly um, decrease the size as I need more detail and uh, later when I go back in to complete it, I'm going to be using a number one round in order to do the fine detail that I wanted to finish up with. But I'm still using the flat here. I'm going in with what I think are my final touches until I go back later. Um, I'm trying to get a little more light on the trees. I wish I had that yellow because I was putting my linden green in there, which was getting greener on the trees. And that was not helping, but uh, it kept the painting cool. So when you're thinking about your continuity, your color harmony, um, keeping all those colors on the cool side was nice. But what I really wanted was a cool yellow and did not have that with me. So this is where I'm finishing off pretty much. But then I'll go back and do the detail work off camera and you'll see the difference in just a moment. This is my quick sketch. I, it isn't my best work because I'm not feeling great, but I just wanted to get something down on paper because I haven't painted in weeks. But as you can see, I'm still shaking from my breathing treatments and stuff. So uh, this is what I got today. And I'm gonna smear some of this grass out because it's too overdone. And I got carried away because I have grass all of a sudden in my yard. So I'm gonna kind of smear some of it out and blend it all together and it's the nice thing about gouache reconstituting is you're not stuck with what you got and you can always go over it with more layers and um, this isn't you know this is just a quick sketch it didn't take me long to do this I think I worked on it for about I don't know 45 minutes or so total well I took a rest and I went back to this because I wasn't happy with it so I added some details I made the ferns a little more apparent that they're ferns and brought the um, branches out a little bit and uh, the light. Then I fixed the ground cover a little more. So this is the final finished sketch. And that took me about another 30 minutes or so. So remember everybody, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. I will talk to you soon. Take care and God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh, thanks for the well wishes and prayers, too.